when you see this kind of exponential equation what comes into your mind are you the type that does it this way they'll just say x to the power of six is equal to five to the power of six you observe that the powers are the same so they cancel it and then say x is equal to five you are right but that's not the only solution for x yes observe carefully that the highest power of x here is six so what it means is that we are expected to have six values of s yes six values of x now follow me if you are that type let me show you what to do when you see this kind of exponential equation so to do that you are going to begin this with solution now this is what we have x to the power of six is equal to five to the power of six now before we answer this let me remind you of this rule of exponent and what does the rule say the rule says that each time you have a raised to power of m then is raised to power of n you have it as a raised to power m n multiply the powers okay now let's see how this can help us to answer this we know too well that this x to the power of six can be written as x to the power of three then raise it to the power of two we have not changed anything if you multiply three and two it gives you six obeying this rule interesting and this is equal to do same here so you have five raised to power three will be raised to the power of two if you multiply this it gives you back this now observe that the sign here is addition so we are going to remove this from the right side to do that you subtract so this is giving us x to the power of three raised to power of two minus five to the power of three raised to power of two when you subtract here everything is equal to zero now remember this rule okay of difference of two squares which says that when you have a squared minus b squared it is a plus b and a minus b okay so this formula will guide us also observe that this value in the bracket takes the value of a and this one will take the value of b so if we apply this formula here we are going to now have so we have x cubed plus 5 cubed okay and what x cubed minus 5 cubed everything will be equal to zero now what do you do also remember that if a b is equal to zero automatically either a is zero or b is equal to zero so what it means is that either of these two is equal to zero so let's work with the first one so in that case we are going to have so we have x cubed plus 5 cubed is equal to zero now this has led you to sum of two cubes and what does the formula say it says a cubed plus b cubed is the same as a plus b into a squared minus a b plus b squared okay so let's see how to apply this using the formula remember this will now be your a and this is your b so applying this formula what do we do we are going to now have so this gives us x okay this is x plus 5 into our x is so we have x squared minus a b means 5 times x so it will give us 5x plus b is 5. So we have 5 squared means 5 times 5, which is 25. So we have 25 here. And everything is equal to 0. Interesting. Now what do we do again? This means that x plus 5 is equal to 0. Okay. Or x squared minus 5x plus 25 is equal to 0. Now for this you see that this is addition so you subtract 5 from both sides so if you do that you are going to now have x is equal to this will give us negative 5 so we have been able to find one value of x now for this you see that this has led us to quadratic equation because the highest power of x is 2 so let's solve this quadratically using the formula and to do that see what you have so solving this we now have x squared minus 5x plus 25 is equal to 0. Now remember your formula which says x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac 
divided by 2a. Now, using this quadratic formula, from this equation, your a is always the coefficient of x squared. And you know the coefficient of x squared here is 1. For any variable without a number, has an invisible 1 as a coefficient, okay? So we can say that our a is 1. Then your b is always the coefficient of x, okay? So the coefficient of x is negative 5. I hope you are with me. Now your c is 25, the constant. So let's plug this into the formula. So if you do that, you have x is equal to the negative sign in the formula. Your b is having negative. So be careful with what you do here, okay? Then plus or minus square root of negative 5 squared minus 4. Our a is 1 and our c is 25. Everything is divided by 2 times our a, which is 1. So if you simplify this further, we are going to have... So this now gives us x is equal to, multiply this to, it gives you positive 5, plus or minus square root of negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5. It gives us 25, okay? So we have 25. Then multiply this, it gives us negative 100. Everything is divided by 2, multiplied by 1 is 2. I hope you are still with me there. So what do you think we should do again? Now, this gives us x is equal to 5 plus or minus. Subtract this, it gives you square root of negative 75 divided by 2. Now, when you have a negative sign inside the square root, just know it that that value is no longer a real solution, okay? It has become a complex because of this negative sign. So in that case, see what you do. Now, remember that this is the same as x is equal to 5 plus or minus square root of negative 1 multiplied by 75. When you multiply this, it gives you back this, okay, divided by 2. Now, this is also the same as x is equal to 5 plus or minus square root of negative 1 multiplied by square root of 75. Everything is divided by 2. Interesting. Now, since we said that it's leading us to a complex solution, we always have it that each time we have square root of a negative 1, we use imaginary unit i to replace this square root of negative 1, okay? Now, in this case, we are going to substitute this here. To do that, we are going to have x is equal to 5 plus or minus. This will take the unit of i. So we have i. But remember that 75 has a perfect square in it. The perfect square in 75 is 25. So we have 25 multiplied by 5. Sorry, 25 multiplied by 3. We give us 75 divided it by 2. I hope you are with me. Now, if you simplify this, we are going to now have x is equal to 5 plus or minus i. Now, the square root of 25, because it's perfect, is 5. So we're going to have 5. This 3 will remain in the root because it's not perfect. So we're going to have square root of 3 all divided by 2. Now, this means that x is equal to 5. Let's split it. We take the positive first. So we have 5 root 3i, okay, divided by 2. Then we also have x is equal to 5, take the negative now, minus 5 root 3i divided by 2. So you observe that we have been able to get three values of a, x. Now let's solve the second part of it. Now remember we also said that x cubed minus 5 cubed is equal to 0. Okay, please recall. Now, if you made this statement, we are going to solve this using difference of two cubes. And that formula says a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b into a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now, let's apply this here. We are going to now have, this gives us x minus 5 into our a. Remember, this is a and this is b. So we have x squared plus, multiply this, you have 5x 
plus 5 squared will give us 25 is equal to 0. Just know that we are repeating what we did in the first phase, okay? So we are going to now say that x minus 5 is equal to 0 or x squared plus 5x plus 25 is equal to 0. Now, if you look at this, you observe you need to add 5 to get x because it's negative. So if you do that, you have x is equal to, this will give us 5. This is the fourth value of x. Now, for this one, we solve it quadratically, and we are going to have x squared plus 5x plus 25 is equal to 0. Remember that your a here is 1, your b is coefficient of x, which is 5, and your c is 25. So if you plug it into the formula, you are going to have x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Now plug this into this formula. We are going to now have... So this now gives us x is equal to negative 5, okay, plus or minus square root of b is 5. So we have 5 squared minus 4. Our a is 1 and our c is a 25. Now everything is divided by 2 multiplied by 1. So if you simplify this, you have x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus. This will give us 25 minus 100 divided by 2. Okay? So if you keep simplifying, we have x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus. This gives us square root of negative 75 divided by 2. And simplify again, we have x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus. For this, we got 5 root 3i, okay? Then divide it by 2. So if you simplify this again, we have our x as x as negative 5. Let's take the positive. So we have plus 5 root 3i, okay, divided by 2. And we also have x as negative 5. Take the negative one. We have negative 5 root 3i then divided by 2, okay? So this is the fifth value of x, and this is the sixth one. So what it means is that the values of x, so let's add the remaining four we've already gotten. We know we have x as 5 plus 5 root 3i divided by 2, okay? You also remember we got x as 5 minus 5 root 3i divided by 2 okay and also remember we have x as being 5 and we also got x as being negative 5 so these are the six values of x we got and please remember that when you have negative 5 plus 5 you cannot subtract or add this this 5 is a coefficient is attached to the roots so you cannot add or subtract them likewise here here and here. I hope it's clear. Now, for these six solutions, these four are what we call the complex solution because they cannot be found on a number line. But these two are what we call the real solution. So these are complex. And I hope you learned a lot. Let's know how much in the comments. And don't forget to share for more people to learn with you. You can ask questions for clarity. I will be there to respond. Give this tutorial a thumbs up and subscribe for more tips. I will see you in our next class. Bye-bye.